Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, as you can see, we have an empty box right now, 2020 Prism Hobby. Uh, today, we're actually gonna review this. Um, spoiler alert, we are gonna cover all the cards that I broke over the last six videos. So if you like to watch breaks, I recommend you watch those first. Um, it was pretty much, it was six, five to 10 minute videos. I opened up two packs per video. Uh, it's my, it's part of my quick break series. I'll be doing this with a bunch of hobby boxes. I think the next one will be a Gypsy Queen. Um, so feel free to check those out if you, you know, want to sort of see the hits happen in real time. If not, this is going to be our review of 2020 Prism Hobby. Um, and there's actually a lot going on here, so I'm, I'm sort of excited to cover this. So let's move this over to the side. Um, the first thing to know is that... 2020 Prism has introduced, I actually don't know if they had this last year or not, I probably should look that up. Uh, you get 144 cards in a hobby box, and they have taken all of your base cards and split them up into three tiers. Uh, Alright, so the first one is just called straight up base, this would be your tier one. There was 50 tier one cards in this, pet, in this box, and your best card in terms of value... Um, I'm sure I could look up the rest of these, but I'm pretty sure this Bo Bichette was definitely the top value card that we got out of the Tier 1 base cards. Uh, it's about a $2 card, I would imagine, or maybe a little bit more, since it's since this is still a pretty young product. But as it matures, I'm assuming this will be the uh, probably about a 2 to $3 card. So I'll throw that down here. So that Bo Bichette was the top hit of those 50 cards. Um, moving on, there's then Tier 2. Now, you might be wondering, what is the difference between Tier 1 and Tier 2? I'm going to tell you that it is probably nothing. There is probably no difference. Um, the only difference is that Tier 2 is numbered from 101 to 200. Um, there's actually just as many cards. There were 48 Tier 2 base cards that were non-PRISM, non-numbered. Um, and our top hit here, there's, there's actually some better cards in this set. Uh, there are 100 cards in each one of these tiers, by the way. So this is about half of them. Uh, we were able to get a Lizardo rookie card, an Acuna, and I would say the top value one again is probably this Gavin Lux. Surprise, surprise, two of the top uh, rookies. So that was 48 cards there. So there are 98 cards between our first two tiers. Now, as we move on to tier three, this is where things get really interesting. Um, and the reason why I say really interesting is this is how many tier three cards that we got in an entire hobby box. Now keep in mind that, let me double check here, uh, tier three is only 50 cards, all right? So this, th these are numbered from 201 to 250, and we got just six of these non-PRISM tier three cards. In terms of the quality of the players we got, nothing great. Um, one rookie card, Mike Dostromsky, I'd say the top card is probably this Yon Mankata. Um, but because of how rare this is, I would put this, you know, it's so early in this product, I wouldn't know what to value these at. Um, but I would say that I would start treating these tier threes as sort of like a short print, right? They're, they're more rare. Um, there's less to come by. You normally wouldn't get six short prints in an entire hobby box. You'd probably normally get two to three or one to three. So... I wouldn't value these as much as a true short print, but they're definitely a higher value than the Tier 1 and Tier 2 cards. So I would automatically bump these up. So if a normal base card is 10 to 15 cents, 10 to 20 cents, I would say one of these Tier 2s I would treat as more of like a 35 to 50 cent card, right? For just your regular base cards. If you had some better rookies, I'd say they're worth even more. Uh, and we actually did get a few of the prisms, but we'll hit that in a second. So there's your base cards, right? So we got a total of 104 base cards, not many of these tier three base cards. Keep an eye out for those. Um, those are definitely rare. If you're on eBay and these are all the same price, I would get as many of these as possible until people actually figure out that these are, this is basically our, our short print set. Okay, moving on, our... Since this is 2020 Prism, you would imagine there's a lot of Prism cards. Uh, and there actually was. Uh, there was a bunch of non-numbered Prisms. So non-numbered, you'll find these silver Prisms, right? You see this Luis Castillo, Mancini, uh, this Warming in the Pen. 
So these silvers are the prisms that you can pretty much get in any box. Retail, I believe, has the silver prisms. Hobby has them. These are your base, basic non-numbered prisms. Uh, and then in terms of hobby packs or hobby boxes, you also get these blue and red prisms. Uh, the blue, we got four of, and the red, we got five. I think they are equally as rare. Um, as you can see, we actually got more of these non-numbered prisms than we did those tier three cards. So keep that in mind as we're talking about the potential value of these cards. Those tier threes are actually pretty rare. Um, yeah, so you've got these blues, you've got these reds. I would say the most valuable card of these 13 non-numbered cards would be this Nick Solak. Um, and there's a, there's three reasons for that. There's a bunch of boxes that you want to check when you're considering value. And this, this checks off three of them. We've got a parallel or prism, as Panini would like to call them. It is a rookie. That's a second check. The third check is 232. This is a tier three base card prism rookie. I would automatically up the value on this just based off those three things. What's it's actually, what is it actually worth? I'm not 100% certain. I would, wouldn't be surprised if you could probably get two to, two to five dollars would be my range on this card. Um, I could be way off, but if I was doing this based off of how rare these cards were in a single box, this checks a lot of boxes here. Um, so I would definitely consider that a pretty valuable card. Moving on, besides those 13 non-numbered prisms, we also got six numbered prisms. We'll actually go through these one at a time. I put them in order based off of which ones I like the most. The back has the card I like the most, so we'll start from the front. This was our blue mojo. Uh, this is a Michael King rookie out of 175. We also had, we had multiple versions of this Nelson Cruz, but this was the Power Plaid. It's actually a really nice looking prism. I just sort of wish it was a slightly better card. Nothing against Nelson Cruz. That was numbered out of 75. We then have this Red Mojo prism. Uh, better player here, Christian Yelich, Brilliance card. It's actually a really nice looking card. Um, this one is only out of 149. I'm not sure if you can see that, there we go. And then these last three are definitely the best three numbered prisms we got. This first, Yasmani Grandal. This is, I think, the blue kaleidoscope. I don't know if you can see those circles. It is a really, really cool looking card. Uh, and that is numbered out of just 35. Uh, that's a really nice card. I wouldn't be surprised if that's worth at least. You could probably, I don't know, trade that $5 worth of value maybe there, maybe more. Um, my favorite prism is actually the snakeskin. Uh, this is James Paxton. This is numbered out of 50, so it's not as rare as that kaleidoscope, but I just like the look of this card. Uh, really nice. Lastly, what is likely the most valuable card of all the numbered prisms is this Ronald Acuna stargazing neon orange, uh, which is numbered out of 100. Uh, it's a really... Really nice card. I like the stargazing. It's probably my favorite insert. And the fact that it's one of the top players in baseball, one of the top young players in baseball, uh, makes it all that much more valuable. I was looking this up. I think this was selling for between $10 and $15 right now on eBay. So that's probably our best numbered non-auto prism. From there, we're going to move on to the inserts. All right, so we've covered quite a few cards here. We did get a total of, I believe, 18 inserts. And I'm going to split them up into two groups. <clears throat> what Prism has done is they've actually included about, I think it's three or four different insert sets of prospects. So these are our prospect inserts. Uh, we got our now on deck set, which I've got two of those. The top of the class, which we actually ended up getting, I think, four of those. And then some warming the pens. These are your top pitching prospects. These are just top prospects altogether. And the now on deck, I believe, is top hitting prospects. And this Wander Franco at the top is probably the most valuable card here. I have not looked up the value of that, but I wouldn't be surprised if you can get it two to three dollars for that card. Um, uh, you know, two to three dollars worth of value. Okay, moving along, we've got our inserts for pro players, um, and there are a lot of different insert sets for Prism. We've got the Stargazing, which we already found on that Acuna. 
We've got Illumination, Fernando Tatis Jr. We've got this really cool looking Instant Impact. Actually, this might this might be up there for one of my favorite inserts. Uh, all we got was one in this entire hobby box, and it's Bryce Harper. We got this Jose Altuve Fireworks. We got this Lumber Ink. It's probably my least favorite insert, the Lumber Ink. Uh, we got Machines, DJ LeMayhew. We've got one too many of these numbers game inserts, but that's okay. Uh, we got two of these bases, and I think another two Prism versions of them. That Juan Soto is nice, though. Um, love the background of this brilliance. And then you've got the scorching. Uh, so we got a good mix of the different insert sets. I would say the most valuable one is the Aaron Judge, just based off the quality of the player. Um, I don't think any of the sets themselves that we got here are any more rare than the rest. Um, so I would say that Aaron Judge is definitely the top one. Now, last but not least, let's jump into our three autos, because this is all about what kind of value can you get. You know, if you're collecting this set, I think a hobby box makes a lot of sense, because you are going to get a great mix of prisms and base cards and tier three base cards. Um, all together, I, I initially didn't think I wanted to collect this set, but now after opening up a hobby box, I may have to get myself another one and try to complete this set. We'll see. So all three, we didn't get any crazy hits in terms of our autos. It would have been nice if we did, but we didn't. Uh, but they are all rookie cards. And so let's go through these. So these first two cards are just your base rookie autograph cards. Um, two pitchers. We got Adrian Morion and Brian Abreu. Uh, these are actually top five prospects in their system. Uh, Brian Abreu is probably one of the best curveballs you know, for all prospects in baseball. Unfortunately, he's got some control issues, so he might just become a really good reliever, uh, which makes this card, the potential of this card growing in value, not very likely. I think this will remain a 5 to a $8 card. Um, Adrian, on the other hand, is one of the top prospects. He has some injury issues, but he, is, he, could, he has the potential of being a number two, number three starter. He's in San Diego now, full of young, great prospects. Um, Unfortunately, he also has the potential of just becoming a long relief guy. Again, making this probably, I wouldn't cap, I'd cap this off at 5 to $8 as well. Our last card was probably our best card. Uh, we've got this prism, silver prism. It is Sean Murphy. So if anyone's not familiar with Sean Murphy, he is one of the top catching prospects in baseball. He actually played a little bit last year. Not sure if you can see that, but in just 53 at-bats, Nine extra base hits, almost a thousand OPS. He's actually projected to be a borderline star as a catcher. Great power. Um, this has actually potential to becoming a decently valued card. I think right now you might be able to get ten bucks for it, but this is one that I would hold on to and I plan on it. Um, yeah, so that's your Sean Murphy. That was definitely the top auto hit uh, in terms of total value. Right now, if I wanted to sell the card, this Stargazing Ronald Acuna is probably the highest value card that we got in this entire hobby box. Now, this is not one of the cheapest hobby boxes out there. Um, so unless you're looking to actually collect it, it's a little bit of a chance to buy one of these to try to see if you can try to get you know all your value in return in just a single card. You never know with rookies if they pan out or not. Overall... I'm a big fan of the set. If you just like collecting sets, this is one worth collecting. I believe they started, they took a break in 2015, they came back in 2019. So if you wanted to start from new, you could probably just start collecting 2020 and 2019. And that makes it, you know, pretty easy to start collecting this complete set starting from when they came back in. Um, I, that's about it for my review. I hope you enjoyed that review. I like to walk through this. I know that you know, some of you are wondering if you should go out there and buy a hobby box on eBay or buy it somewhere else. Um, so hopefully a video like this helps you make that decision on uh, whether or not you want to or not. I think for me, I might eventually find myself getting another one of these sets. We'll see. Um, I think I want to complete it knowing that I've got probably half of it here uh, and the other half could probably be covered with another hobby box. But thanks again for spending the time to check out this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like. We got another quick break series coming with either Optic or Gypsy Queen. I haven't figured that out, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks so much, everybody, and have a great one.